Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the Green Bay New York Giants showdown slate for tonight. For those of you that did not see the um, the uh, the other showdown slate first, you'll forgive. Uh, well, if you have seen that one, you'll forgive this introduction. Uh, but this is a very unique. I don't say that unique, but it's an interesting day for DFS today because you have all different types of sports and slate sizes to test. You know, different different ways to play DFS. I think think it's very interesting. So you have a 13-game NBA slate, and then you also have a four-game NHL and three different NFL slates, two showdown slates and one two-game slate. So it tests not only your knowledge of how to play each sport, but how to play each uh, size like within sports. Very, very interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the showdown slate for Green Bay Giants, and we're going to be using actually the true DFS interface to SaberSim. I usually use the SaberSim one directly, but because my files are all kind of out of sync, uh, I am going to actually attempt to use the TrueDFS one. And uh, it works actually pretty well um, to access the TrueDFS projections and upload those to SaberSim and just run those. So what we're going to try to do is um, do a lineup build, show you how to do that specific to today, today's slate. And again, my, my whole goal in these videos is to show you a process that will, well, make you not have to come back to these videos all too often. You know, uh, yes, you are going to have to access the tools that I'm using to, to build this way, but I think the process here is so much more important than spending 45 minutes going over the game. Um, and even who the good plays are, but just knowing who the good plays are does not necessarily do much for you, especially in NFL showdown. So we're going to hopefully teach you guys something. And again, that's whole, totally my goal for this whole experience. So again, the first thing we want to do is we want to replace the Saberson projections with ours. Now you don't have to, but uh, uh, just to show you how to do that, and then we'll build from there. I want to go back to the NFL projections. This is on True DFS. Actually, you can use your own projections whenever. But if you're a True DFS subscriber, usually it'll actually upload my projections into the Saberson interface. For whatever reason, it's not doing that. But uh, we are. We will not be uh, deterred. We will um, we will do it this way. We'll go to NFL Showdown Projections because I uploaded them to the site, but for whatever reason they didn't. They usually come right over to Saberson right away, but uh, they're just not doing that right now. And we're calling this one the late game, even though they start at the same time. So we downloaded them to there, and then we're going to go back into Saberson through Tools. Go into the correct slate, which is obviously nice. And then we're going to upload the projections. Now, first question that we need to ask is whether to include only the players we have projections on, or do we include all of them? In other words, Saberson some, 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 Saber sometimes gives you these guys that like 0.6 points or something like that, which I usually don't project. Um, I believe that you should always opt for inclusion. I'm not saying you have to play them, but you should at least put them in your player pool. So we're not going to click exclude unlisted players. We're just going to click save. And now it's going to have everybody in here. Um, uh, now here's the problem. So Aaron Jones, they have a projection. We know that he's now out. Oh, is he out? They don't, they don't expect him to play. So we could just make sure we make that a zero. And then we're going to go down and see all these other guys that Green Bay is including that, excuse me, that Saberson's including that I might not want to. I don't know. So uh, Patrick Taylor, we're going to keep him in, especially with Jones out. And the two guys that they have listed here are, are Samori Torrey, who's like the 80th wide receiver, and Eric Gray for the Giants, who's like the 400th running back. Um, usually you don't want to mess with it and leave them in. I'll get rid of the, wolf, the first guy, but I'll keep in um, Torrey. Uh, where is Daniel Bellinger? That's a question. I guess. Do you not have him projected? Oh, no, he's in. All right. So this was actually pretty easy. We only had to XL like one guy, which is always really important. So the next thing we want to do is just start building. So we're going to build 50 lineups. Well, we're going to build 5,000 lineups. 
but we're going to build, oh, we'll build 100. So we want 100 and we're going to build 5,000. We're not going to make any changes to the groups or worry about game flow or anything like that. We're just going to build these things. And this is what I consider just like the very basics. Like if, if you can't do this, you're, you have no hope of being EV. You have to be able to get a set of projections, run a bunch of lineups. And I believe that you get the custom projections for true DFS and then you will up, then you will use SaberSim to build upside lineups. You're not building the, the optimals that a lot of other, the other optimizers will give you. We're building for upside. And SaberSim does a really, really good job of building for upside. Um, it's going to take like a couple of minutes. So I'm going to pause this and get back to you in just a sec. All right. So we built the uh, 5,000 lineups and it's displaying the top 100. And remember, this is what we're looking at here. It's displaying these 100 rated in terms of Sabre score. Um, and it's a single game. So that's why you see this checked off. It's a single game showdown slate. And so it's rating them by Sabre score, which is a, which is pretty good. You know, it, it, it's better than the optimal, uh, better than rating them by optimal score, which is just basically it's the median projection. It does provide for some degree of upside and a little bit of ownership fade. So rating them by Saber score is pretty good. So I, I think at this point, again, this is the minimum. It's literally the bare minimum. You can get to this point really, really easily. And I actually believe that at this point, you might actually be, be plus EV. Get a good set of projections and a good lineup builder you know, and, and, and I think you could, might be plus EV. Now, there's other things that you can do, though. You know, sh should we run a contest sim? Should we immediately start going for uh, duplication uh, minimization um, to, to win the lottery? What we're going to do is we're going to use the contest sims because I think that is really the next step. I think that, that if you can run the contest sims, I think that pile is usually going to be better than the straight Sabre Sim lineups, because at least you're attempting to compare it with some, you know, field of lineups, even if it might not be completely perfect. So first thing I want to do is let's, let's um, upload the contest data, actually. So let's, uh, the way I do it is I just upload my own contest files. I mean, they do have them listed here as well, but oops, I didn't do this. Um, Thought I did. Hold on. Let's um. Did I not uh, enter this contest yet? No, I did. All right. So let's uh, right click add contest sim for the two point conversion. Right click add contest sim for the the lottery. Two hundred thousand prize pool. Fifteen thousand six hundred eighty six. Um, that's going to become important in a second. So we're going to write that down. Fifteen thousand. 686. So let's uh, go back to our first build here and we're going to run our contest simulations. So what we're doing, remember, is we are comparing our 5,000 lineups to the uh, presumed field of lineups that are going to be played in these actual contests. Now, again, this isn't perfect. And if you compare what it looks like now to what it's going to look like in two or three years, you're going to, you're going to laugh. So I'm, I promise you this is not a good, well, it's not an optimal field of lineups. It's probably not even good, but it's better than zero. That That's for sure. Um, so are you costing yourself if in fact the field of lineups is bad? Is Does this mean that if the field of lineups are bad, you should probably be just playing the, the Sabre score lineups? Maybe. I don't know the answer. Um, but okay, so we ran the simulations and now we're going to put in, we're going to re-rate these 5,000 lineups for the actual contest. So Monday Night Showdown, this is the lottery here, sort by risk-adjusted ROI. And this is the group of lineups that uh, would be recommended. Uh, these are rated by, um, by risk-adjusted rate of return, you know, and uh, this is actually an improvement over just the saber score lineup. So first thing I want to do is let's uh, let's put these in. Let's for now replace what we had with these. That's a good step in the right direction. But question is, uh, is this unique enough? Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know whether it's unique enough. So what does that mean? Well, let's figure out what ownership is required to ensure, not ensure, but at least predict that we're not going to be duped by a million people. So again, what did we write down? 15,686. So we pull out our geo mean calculator here. And 2686. And again, I'm going to put this on the site. I just have Evan working on it right now. This would be the formula here. And if you want to have a minimum of, you know, if you want to only have one dupe or whatever, you have a geo mean of 20. Somewhere between 20 and 23 would work. So let's just see. Let's do a filter where we. Uh, we already saved my metric as being geo mean less than 20, what did I say, 21, maybe? And uh, this looks actually looks pretty good. You know, uh, you're getting, you're getting some kind of offbeat captains. Maybe actually, it's actually, this is not that bad. And this is a pretty, you know, listen, you're getting the Mike Heath experience. I guess that's the, there's always something. You can't just get all great plays. Yeah, so you're getting you're getting a whole bunch of Malik Heath if you want to do this, like 40% Malik Heath. So you have to kind of make peace with that. Or or you can ex you can expand your your uh what's the word I'm looking for? Your geo mean uh, limit to, to higher, and then maybe you'll get less Malik Heath. Or you can manually reduce your exposure to Malik Heath. I don't like doing that. Um, I don't like messing with the system that way. So I think this is actually a good place to just, just upload these. One other thing I will say is let's see if I can make min uniques more than one. Is it going to yell at me? Yeah, no, not bad. But what that does is that actually, what that's going to do, it's going to give me less Malik Heath but it's going to get me more in the captain, actually, right? Let's see. And now it's getting me all kinds of stuff in the captain over here, which maybe I don't want. But actually, this isn't that bad. Like one or two with Daniel Bellinger's, and, you know, God forbid he gets the two touchdowns. So actually, this is pretty good. So let's – uh. so what, what have we done here, okay, before we even forget this? So we've run a contest. We've picked out a you know, 5,000 lineups that do well. You know, in this in this particular contest, and then we gave it some duplication medication. We didn't have to reduce salary. We just said, okay, I don't want to own that much. So we put a geo mean that was, a, you know, predictive of maybe two or three dupes, and we fired it. And I think this is actually not a bad way to play it. Um, let's go do the uh, big buy-in. Let's make sure we get that one done. And here I don't have to worry about dupes really that much. Um, let's just see what it is, though. My metric 20, that's fine. Totally fine. I'm not too worried about, you know, leaving money on the table or not. Just save this. And, th and then we're good. Um, we will save these here. Now, again, it's up to you whether you want to then go ahead and, you know, be foot, be a football guy, you know, and then say, well, you know, I, I don't want that much of, uh, of X, Y, Z. I don't want X, Y, Z in this, you know, and yeah, you feel free to go ahead and do that. Um, I am not the type that usually goes and does that every once in a while, I'll get a take and I'll do it. I mean, I'll do it, you know, whatever, but it's showdown, especially I've just, I, I just never had any luck with that. I just let the, let the, I trust my Sims. Hey, hey look at that, Ben Sims. How, how logical, excuse me. Kind of, what kind of harbinger is that? You play Ben Sims and trust your Sims. Can't do any better than that. Um, so again, one thing we haven't done is we haven't talked about the plays. We haven't talked about the games. I, I really don't care. Uh, I think the Giants are going to, you know, probably win by, lose by four points. I don't know. What does that mean? I mean, sometimes they win by, by five. I mean, sometimes they lose by 15. You know, there's a range of outcomes here. Um, and I, yeah, I think Jordan Love's a great play. That's terrific. I think Barkley's a good play. That's terrific. But knowing what the good plays are is not really relevant. I mean, it's relevant, but it's not half as relevant as being able to figure out 
you know, what bad plays to play or what bad lineups to play that even though they're bad, they're not that bad. And they're that, they're that bad in that nobody's going to own them, but they have a shot. And that type of balance is what's really, really difficult. And why you do the things that I did here, like run the contest sims and do some kind of, you know, anti-dupe uh, filtering to make sure that you get at least some degree of uniqueness. And that's the, that's the logic of, 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 of showdown. It's not, it's, listen, in classic slate, we're trying to X guys out and not play people. In showdown, we're trying to be inclusive. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, and again, uh, the goal is not for you to necessarily run this slate, but it's to learn how to use this process for other slates so you don't even have to come back to these videos anyway. All right, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everyone.